All right, we're back at the 2019 Michigan Junior Championship here in Rochester Hills at Oakland University. And here with me, I have one of the stars, the young stars here at this tournament, uh, Joe Henry. And he's playing in the K-8 uh, reserve section. Um, how many points do you have so far in the tournament? Uh, I have two wins and two losses. Two wins and two losses, so 50%. Yeah. Are you having fun? Yeah. All right, so that's what it's all about, to have fun at these tournaments. Now, a little bit of background I want to know about you. Let's, who taught you how to play chess? Uh, a little bit was from my dad, and then, some was, and then most of it was from my coach. Okay, all right. And who's your coach? Uh, coach Maddox. Coach Maddox. Shout out, shout out to Coach Maddox, doing great things for the kids out there. And at this tournament, uh, we are doing a social media um, <clears throat> um, new thing here at these tournaments where we make sure that our kids are the stars and you could watch these videos on YouTube on the MIChess.org channel. Make sure you like and share and subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Now we're going to get into the game here. So let's pull up our magic board. Bam! There we go. <clears throat> And here, Joe, you had the white pieces. <clears throat> and the first move that was played is e4, e5. We have knight f3, knight c6, <clears throat> bishop c4. This is really, really good development. d4, e takes d4. And here, Joe, whoa, what happened here? <clears throat> All right. So here, you played d4, and here it looks like you took back here, right? Yeah. And that was probably a mistake? No. No? Are you going check here? What you doing? All right, so knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and what? Check? <laughs> I made a mistake and put the up uh, and took with the queen because I was moving too fast and I wasn't looking. Oh, you took here? Yeah. Ah, okay. So I'm going to show you something. So what you played here is kind of like a scotch game, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So here, after take, you did make a mistake here because you just don't have enough to take back. He has two things guarded and you have two attacking, but one of those things is your queen. So you really can't take the d4 pawn. But there is something that you can do. So, for instance, uh, you did take here, which still is a mistake, but when he took here, you could actually get something from this by stopping him from castling. And the re way you do that is playing bishop takes f7, king takes f7, and you get your piece back this way. Look. King moves wherever, I don't know, maybe g6, and then we take and even though we lost the piece, but you can't castle. So I know your king is going to be in the center, and then I'm going to bring all my pieces out, and I'm going to attack your king while it's there, right? So that was one way you could have done that. Um, and a lot of times, to tell you the truth, we, when you took with the queen, that, that definitely hurts. <laughs> all right, it might, might not be much we can do at this point, right? But I will say this. If you make a mistake, Right? You give up a piece for a pawn, whatever it might be. Remember, sometimes the mistake isn't as bad as you might think initially. Because initially you're like, oh man, my, my queen, my piece. You know? What you should do is you should get up, get some water, right? Walk around a little bit, and come back and look at the board with a fresh look. And then think about the positive that you have in the position, right? And so when you think when you look at it that way. After take here, then you can see these types of moves. Because your emotions is not a lot, is, is not hindering you or stopping you from looking at it. Because when you get emotion, you make it say, oh man. And what happens is, this is what we call crying at the chessboard. Because you make a mistake, but it's not the mistake, the first mistake you made that hurts you. It's those five moves after that makes it worse. Right? Because after you're like, oh, I lost my piece, <clears throat> just move some pieces. And then when you wake up, oh, it's worse. So that's why you kind of want to walk away from the board, come back, have a fresh look, and then you might, you know, see some positives in your position, even though you're down a piece, right? <clears throat> so just remember that. 
But here, <laughs> you lost the queen, and that's going to be tough to come back from. But maybe you can castle before him. Maybe he won't castle. And as long as it's king in the center, you might not even need a queen to attack. <clears throat> so here, after this trade, you play here g3. Now, see, you have to get castle here. Because the only thing you're going to have an advantage in is development. And the castling is the best, uh, one of the best moves in development. Actually, the best move in development. So, for instance, if, if your king is not in the center and their king is in the center, it's so easy for you to attack that king when it's in the center. Because your pieces that are on the queen side doesn't, don't have to travel that far to get to that king. Whereas if the king is way over here in the corner, the knight is going to take four moves to get over there in that corner. Where if it's in the center, it's easier for us to get to the king. So remember that. When you have castle and your, other, your opponent have not castle, it's time to go. You got to get them. You got to be really aggressive, right? But you don't want to do that when your king is in the center too. Because it's basically like you guys are just punching each other. Nobody's blocking anything, right? But when you your king is castled, it's almost like you put you have your guard up, and this person just have his face there and won't defend, right? So even though you're down a queen, as long as you have this development lead, you never know what could happen, right? Things Weird things start to happen when you have a development lead. <clears throat> All right, so here he played, whoa, wait a minute. He played... Oh, he plays queen f6 um, and threatening this f2 pawn. And here you castle, and then now bishop takes b2. Okay? And after bishop takes b2, you trade. Okay, you probably have to do that. And then queen takes, and then you move knight d2, queen takes d2. And here, and see, these are actually, these are the type of moves that I don't like black making, actually. Because... The best, now his emotion, right? So you have your, your idea is I'm losing and you're looking for any moment to come back. You're like, oh man, if you just do this, I'm coming back. His attitude is I'm winning. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to win this game. So he just plays these secondary moves or third rate moves. For, so, so the worst emotion you can have is winning because then you relax. You say, oh man, I'm winning. I'm not, I don't have to look for the best moves anymore. Then the person that's losing is just aware. Ooh, I'm looking for the best move ever right now because I want to come back. This is the situation. This reminds me of that situation because he's made all these moves with the queen just to take a couple pawns, right? Whereas, even though you're down on queen, but look at these pieces, uh, Joe. Look at these pieces. I mean, like, is this rook in the game? No. Is that bishop in the game? No. Look at that knight, the rook, right? Your pieces are easily in the game. So if you can just organize some type of attack, use this queen to get your pieces in the game, like rook d1, maybe rook here, and don't care about it. And then actually, give up the pawns, <laughs> because you're pretty much, you don't, you don't care about pawns at this point, you're down a queen. You're just trying to get an attack going at this king. Well, shouldn't you use the queens like try and get your queen back? Well, well, hold on. I mean, you should attack the queen because it makes your pieces better to further your attack on that other person's king or maybe unprotected pieces, that's true. And if you make it hard for the queen to go to a certain square, yeah, maybe you will get your queen back, but your goal shouldn't be to actually get the queen back, right? Your goal should be just to attack. And, if, and especially if the king's in the center, your goal should be that king. Now, yeah, you use the queen, of, you, of course, attacking the queen is a good thing because it gives you an extra move. Your opponent doesn't want to give the queen up, right? So if you use the queen, if you attack the queen with some of your pieces, you're, he's going to have to move the queen and you get another move. You attack the queen and give another piece, get another move, right? So you're constantly getting more moves to further your attack. And before you know it, your pieces are going to march up to his side of the board because he, you're attacking the queen. And then your pieces will be right there next to the king. Boom. There you go. So this is a perfect example because now we want to play rook c1, right? And now the queen really has to, or bishop b3. These types of moves. And the reason why we want to play bishop b3 is because we want to move rook c1. And maybe we can get a highway into the other person's side of the board, right? And start to attack, okay? So I think that he handled his advantage of being up a queen poorly because he was just greedy. He says, I'm up a queen. I want more pawns, more pawns, right? That can get you in trouble, okay? So here, here after, let's see, he went... Queen takes e2, rook b1, and see here you made another mistake. 
because now he takes the piece and you needed that piece to start attacking. You see what I mean? So that really hurt. Um, and then here I see rook b5. He goes knight e7. And then you play rook d5. And then he just takes. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's all right. Um, you know, that, I mean, that... That, that's an easy thing to say. That's an easy tip. You got to focus, right? It is, it, it's, you know, and I know your coach tells you that, but you got to focus in order, and especially in this game, because it just takes that one moment you're not focused and you lose the game and make a bad decision or something like that. So if you have to, you know, have something in your mind uh, before you make a move, some type of thing you're telling yourself, like, yo, I want to look at all captures and all checks and everything first before I actually put this piece on that square, right? You got to sit on your hands. I'm not even gonna move this hand until I look, use my system. Where's all the captures? Where's all the checks? You imagine that piece on the square you wanna go to and ask those questions in your mind, and then that probably will help you focus a little bit more. And it's okay to get up, man. It's okay after you make your move and, and you're getting kind of antsy, get up, get some water, man. Walk around and loosen yourself up. You don't have to be sit there all uh, tight up all the time, right? It's okay to relax a little bit, right? That might help you focus even more, all right? But anyway, Joe, Henry, I see some really, really good things in your future, man. As long as you keep listening to your coach, next time you come here next year, you won't be in that section. You'll be in that championship section taking names, okay? So thanks for coming and uh, uh, showing us your game. And remember, uh, we need you guys to share and like and subscribe to our uh, video here at Michigan Chess Association and also the uh, Facebook page and also the Twitter Michigan Chess Association. And for Joe Henry, I am the coach, Coach Wilson, and I'll see you the next video series.